Okay, um, now let's begin today's uh, uh, lecture. Um, as you can see here, uh, I've uh, opened the slideshow. Uh, please download the slideshow if you haven't. Um, today's topic is cluster clustering or cluster model, cluster analysis. It's um, the the specific type of cluster anal the cluster model that I would to delve into is the k-means cluster and I will skip the hierarchical clustering algorithm for your own reading now as you know so far we I have mostly talk, uh, talked about and you have mostly uh, practiced um, supervised learning and clustering is not supervised learning clustering algorithm is unsupervised learning now you guys know that the uh, the key difference between the two supervised versus unsupervised learning is the presence of a target variable you know supervised learning does does have a target variable specified but unsupervised learning does not have a target variable specified so without a target variable, what can you do with the data? You know, even without target variable, you can still find um, some kind of patterns in the input uh, data space. You know, the um, sometimes uh, dozens of input variables uh, provided about the um, subject or object of interest to the business, and based on the numerical values or sometimes categorical labels of those input variables, you can still kind of, you know, put the, you can separate those cases um, based on their information as if, you know, you can, you can quite intuitively separate groups of people based on their um, credit risks, you know, based on the information that you know about their consumption behaviors, how the way, the way people spent money and manage their money and savings and asset tells a lot about um, their credit risk. In fact, the credit scores are are mostly based on the way that they spend their money and save um, their money and manage their asset. So uh, that's an an, an uh, analogy. Um, Clustering is trying to separate uh, the population of the subject of interest into several or a few number. It cannot be too large, otherwise it becomes uh, unman it becomes unmanageable, and clustering makes no sense. Clustering the purpose of clustering is to um, separate or segment the population of interest into a fairly small number of um, groups. The differences between the groups should be large, whereas the similarities between the cases within a group should be large. So to, f to put the objective formally, clustering algorithm has have this uh, ultimate objective is to for the cases between or across the clusters cluster 1 cluster 2 their similarity should be maximized or in another in, in another way to say it this this similarity the differences should be Uh, maximized whereas if you zoom in to individual cases within this cluster number one the the uh, the similarities between the cases should be maximized whereas the dissimilarity or the difference should be um, minimized difference should be minimized 
So that would be the purpose. There are two parallel purposes, um, but they follow the same logic. Why do we need it? Because sometimes we don't have the target variable. Target variable is unavailable. And um, sometimes you, um, sometimes the target variable is not of a high quality. You can come up with an alternative target variable by actually by using the clustering algorithm. So clustering algorithm does provide you some unique uh, information about the groups even if even if there is a defined target variable there clustering variable can answer a slightly different question and come up with a slightly different target variable that provides useful information now to to sort of illustrate the idea behind clustering algorithm you know the the key logic behind how clustering algorithm does its job. Let's do an, an, a fun game. Hopefully you find fun in this game. Um, you won't be able to see these slides in your uh, in the slides that you download from PowerPoint because this is this part is reserved for for me to to go through in in the class or in this video. So here I have an object of interest. There are several kinds of uh, there are several different kinds of the, the same object in the population. You know, I won't give you I won't give you any hint here about what they are. Just you know, use your imagination. But there's some information here. Each of the the object, um, even if uh, you know, regardless of the type, uh, the type, the 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 grouping, the types. The groups are the purpose of the clustering. It is the purpose of this game. You you are to guess the different types. What are they? And ultimately, what is the object of interest? Now, uh, regardless of the type or the groups, each one of them can still put on this uh, two-way uh, scatter plot here. The two uh, key uh, variables or key measures to, to describe the object is the weight in terms of the gram and the density of the material. When I say material, it does preclude the case from being the object being uh, animals. You, know, you can't measure animals by uh, density, you know, and then humans or any organic parts. So you can't do that, really. Um, so it's it's an object, um, uh, but that's uh, you know still leaves a lot of possibilities here. So you can you can describe each instance of the object by uh, or each kind of the object by uh, two measures the gram and uh, density density would be what uh, typically mean gram per you know volume um, so here based on you know uh, the 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 essence of clustering is uh, is to to segment the groups by uh, based on how different how different the cases are between each other on key measures based on these two key measures um the and based on how the different instances the object uh, locate on this uh on this scatter plot it seems to be the case that uh, uh, gram is the most it is more useful in segmenting the cases than density. You know this might not be true, but it seems to be the way. So based on the differences in in grams, uh, there's a segment that is that falls between two and three grams, and there's another segment that falls between four and seven, you know, um, se uh, uh, grams. So there seems to be two segments. So can you guess, based on this information, can you guess what the object is? What is the object that typically weighs between two and seven grams, but, but they are separated into two segments? There's a smaller kind and there's a bigger kind. What could it be? What could it be? Computer? No. 
it's too heavy so what else can it be think about it we see two cluster is it really true now um, there we, we do have a third measure uh, because the the way to the, the because of the way um, scatter scatter plot can work we can only show two dimensional plot but it turns out to be that while the weight is informative it separates you know two groups um, uh, smaller than 3.5 or, or uh, lighter than 3.5 gram or or heavier than 3.5 gram but by using uh, density doesn't help too much however when we use diameter diameter it seems to be uh, round the object is round by using diameter we do see a little bit more nuanced uh, picture of the other group the heavier group that, that, that they seem to further separate into two uh, groups although not by too much uh, difference in terms of gram their diameters on average they are different um, by you know by somewhat one eighth or one ninth the average of the average of the two clusters are different by one ninth uh, so we we kind of see three groups here by using another diameter it seems to be that so the conclusion is that diameter is a more informative attribute to separate at least these two groups uh, or actually by using diameter it it effectively separate the three groups and in this case even without using weight we can kind of see a boundary uh, between three um, the three clusters diameter better is better able to um, separate cluster two and three so based on this information you know we see three clusters definitely by using two uh, informative attributes both of them are both of them are, are uniquely informative uh, uh, for sap for 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 clustering the groups so what can this object be now um, since we know that uh, di uh, diameter is a more useful um, attribute to, to cluster the groups and looking back you know if we plot uh, back uh, the, the the objects uh, by using density again you know we can't separate uh, by using the density uh, alone we we essentially cannot do anything to separate the groups uh, using weight we can separate the two uh, big clusters but using diameter we can further separate the, the heavier group into two clusters and here the color is actually using density you know or or by using the uh, cutoff point of the density um, to plot the uh, two groups uh, to separate the two groups so now we have three groups here that are in the relevant ranges of the weight and density what can you guess about these objects these objects are very light um, each of them is very light there are at least three clusters there are actually four common types but uh, the, f the fourth one would uh, essentially be indistinguishable here um, by using uh, these met these measures so I didn't plot the fourth one so what can it be now I'm going to reveal the answer um, in five seconds so think about it if you still enjoy you know the curiosity of trying to guess what this is okay I'm gonna reveal the answer yeah it's coins hopefully it's interesting um, as for coins we have the quarter 
uh, uh, being the, the heaviest and with the highest diameter, they form a cluster. And we have Nikos. We have Nico is smaller and less and slightly lighter than quarters, but definitely, uh, definitely larger, uh, and definitely larger and heavier than the other two uh, groups. But here, you know, I'm actually using two colors um, to plot the two types, but they are so closely related it's 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 different it's, it's so difficult to separate them simply by using these measures uh, even uh, including diameter but uh, in order to separate these two groups that are f that are highly similar you would need the actual uh, symbols on on the coin to separate them out all right i hope you guys enjoy this uh, game but essentially the purpose of the game is to illustrate how cluster algorithm did its job in separating um, the clusters. Uh, and um, the result of this clustering um, exercise actually conformed to our knowledge about the different types of coins. So clustering does have some ability to conform to, to reveal answers in a that conform to our knowledge. But in, in the world of unknown problem, unknown solution, clustering would be even more important in guiding us to be able to see different groups. Um, you know, the, the cases between groups are heterogeneous. The groups are heterogeneous across each other, but within those each of those groups, the cases are homogeneous homogeneous um, uh, within each of the cluster. Okay, now um, I will I will talk about the the demo um, in the second section in the second part of this video. Uh, the demo will focus on a new data set. It's about uh, or a data set that appeared uh, last week, I think. But here it's the the census the census data or actually this is a new data set the census data uh, census data is enormous you know and this is only a small sub subset of the data set but it's also uh, large and in this data set uh, the task is to use only a few variables to uh, a few variables about the uh, neighborhood um, properties uh, of the different neighborhoods across this is actually uh, Thirty thousand neighborhoods, not uh, not uh, uh, people, but neighborhood, and uh, the task is to to cluster these many of uh, neighborhoods into uh, a few number of clusters of different neighborhoods and to profile them. And this is kind of uh, revealing some of the solutions of profiling. And here I illustrate a. A format of how to how to describe how to describe the profile you know how to describe uh, profiles so you can have you know five clusters and each of the cluster can be uh, described about their profile by using the information uh, that are illustrated or plotted in these graphs um, in in the videos of previous semesters about cluster profile, you will learn how to do that. So just be patient. And your region density percentile, uh, median household income. These variables will appear in your uh, cluster profiles. You are using these variables and how they compare to other clusters and the entire population to to describe the uniqueness about a specific cluster, median household income, and also average household size. I hope this will make sense. I'll come back to this uh, just a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I will continue. I will continue to talk about clustering. Now to re to reiterate, the purpose of clustering uh, algorithm, they. Um, they they are trying to achieve they are trying to achieve a higher um 
between cluster variation so it has to be large that would that will indicate uh, you know all of these three uh, arrows uh, er um, lines here between cluster the, this is the cluster boundary of different clusters um, the algorithm is trying to enlarge or maximize you know the thickness of this line is to maxim maximize the distances is to maximize the differences represented by the distances of the centers of different clusters it's a b between cluster variation but at the same time it's trying to shrink it's trying to minimize you know within the cluster to minimize the the similarities you know the distances or similarities between the cases um, so uh, within cluster variation will be small for within cluster simulation belt uh, variation uh, so how does it do it um, to to clarify a myth here uh, or a misconception it doesn't uh, doesn't change the distance or it doesn't change the data you know the algorithm doesn't change the data it, it's not that it changes the data uh, and, and by means of that it changes the variations and changes the distances it doesn't but it tries to come up with a solution that draws boundaries uh, in a way that can maximize the resultant uh, clusters differences between each other uh, and also reduces the the differences of cases within each of the clusters so that's what it does now, obviously, you probably have, um, you know, thought about that. K K means cluster bears a similar name to an earlier algorithm that we talked about, which is a K nearest neighbor uh, algorithm, or we typically use it to uh, for classification tasks. So K means and K, K and N. Are they the same? They're definitely not the same. One is unsupervised. This is unsupervised. K nearest neighbor classifier is a supervised method uh, just because of the purposes that they fulfill. But also they are they, they do bear some similarities. The similarity is the the the, the key um aspect of the algorithm they both use distances between cases to identify uh, solutions in k nearest neighbor algorithm distances are used to select the k nearest neighbors in k means cluster distances are um, distances are used to um, this is distances are used to cluster and temporarily cluster, cluster or segment the cases so that the center of cluster can be updated. Then in the next uh, next iteration, uh, based on the recalculated cluster centroids, um, the 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 segmentation or the cluster uh, cluster ownership of the of the points are recalculated and updated until the algorithm can converge so uh, just to, you know uh, to be short the similarity measure plays a key role in both of these uh, algorithms but nevertheless the the two algorithms are still different they fulfill the different purposes um, and as you have expected Euclidean distance would be the same classic distance measure or distance formula under each and since we're on this topic and because distance is used to as a key measure of um, you know um, uh, progressing with the algorithm something that you must do before you analyze the data you're doing the the data pre-processing stage would be to you know, I'm sure you know, 
um, I'm sure you're not excellent, I know you know it. Um, key is to standardize or normalize all variables. Why? Because if you don't, the arbitrary scale of some of the variables will bias the solution um, so that in the end those variables will play an important role where um, in ground truth those variables shouldn't be play such a big role here every variable should be fair you should be fair to every variable you should allow the true variant variations not the, the artificial the uh, arbitrary scales um, play a big role you should allow the variations to to surface under a normalized um, uh, scenario right and here standardization or normalization doesn't mean to make the distribution normal that is not the job of standardization or normalization standardization or normalization simply uh, fulfills the job of keeping the scales the unit the unit side of each of the variables to be the same you know under standardization, each unit change should correspond to one standard deviation of that variable's original scale. You know, so that after standardization, we can put the points on a square uh, two by two plane, and the variations correspond to our visual uh, sides. I will talk more about it when when I talk about a specific problem here. And here, Euclidean distance can be calculated uh, by means of the formula. If um, you know, and there are different types. No, I will not talk about this. Cut this slide. Okay, let me talk uh, briefly about the uh, the procedure of uh, k k means clustering. This is how computers go through iteration by iteration in the background. Uh, in each iteration, or, or in the beginning of the um, algorithm, it first asks for a number of k. You must indicate this k, even though algorithm will have some other measures to indicate what might be the optimal number of k. Uh, and this is in slight difference uh, with the k nearest neighbor algorithm. In, in K and N algorithm, algorithm will not even indicate to you what might be, uh, what is a best guess for the optimal K, because in that case, that is uh, supervised modeling. Here, it's unsupervised model. It does um, analyze the variations in the data set and try to tell you what might be an uh, optimal level of K. After having the K, algorithm will first generate or, or uh, randomly pick uh, k number of points from the entire data set as the beginning point for the centers of uh, for the center of each of the clusters. Remember, you uh, you know you need to pick a k, and k points are selected and they are artificially um, they are they are artificially recognized as the beginning point of the center of the one point cluster so far. And then the next step is to calculate uh, from each point to calculate the distance between each of the points with each of the center of the cluster. And now the center of the cluster are the five uh, are the k randomly selected point in the in the step two. And after the distances are calculated, the shortest distance among all the cluster centers uh, uh, from one point is uh, selected and that cluster ownership is decided in this iteration now next next after you go through all the points in this iteration uh, cluster centroids are updated because now the clusters have more points and those points based on their location they are able to update the center of that cluster 
and after that update of the uh, centroid of cluster then step 3 will be repeated and then step 4 and then update and then step 3 and 4 so th step 3 and 4 and 5 will be repeated step 5 is simply says it goes back to step 3 so that's what step 5 does but also step 5 also checks the uh, stopping criteria if the ownership of the cluster or the cluster centroids does not change at all the algorithm is converged so question during the model analysis what happens to a cluster when a new data point is added to that cluster now to answer this question um, if a new point is uh, newly joins a cluster that that previously has let's say 10 points so those 10 points will uh, construct the center of that cluster if in case a, a new point joins that cluster then based on the location of that new point it inevitably would uh, very likely change the center of you know the geometric center of the cluster then the the result here would be that the cluster centroid will be updated you know okay uh how to update the centroid so let's say that you have three uh you have n number of points here and um you have you have several variables we have variable a b c and this list can be go can go on and on a b c it can go to a very high dimension here you know can can go more and can be more than z and the way to update the central is to update on each of the dimension across all the points so for variable a it calculates the arithmetic center by using this uh, sum divided by the number of total cases you know that so this is arithmetic center of of dimension a and dimension b and so on and so on so the uh, calculation process is actually uh, not very heavy uh, even if you have many uh, many dimensions it's only calculating the arithmetic center uh, of, of those points okay now here comes the fun part um, um, by using eight data points I'm going to uh, illustrate to you by hand how does the what does the computer go through and also how does cluster algorithm uh, figure out um, the, uh, the clustering effectively and to, to evaluate how quickly does the uh, algorithm by following the steps how quickly does the algorithm figure out the, the, the correct clustering and these eight points should illustrate the point because because this will make humans proud because by humans eye it's very easy to figure out the solution and let me show you so here I have you know each of the point has let's say two dimensions we can say a and b and on this two uh, two dimensional plane I'm going to designate x axis as a and y axis as b so each of the point each of the data will be represented by a point on this two, uh, 2D plane. So, and, and take a look at these points. Uh, 0, 3 on, on, the, on the B line. 0, 2 on the B line. 0, 1 on the B line. 1, 2 not far from the B line. 2, 0 is on the A line because the value of B is 0. 2, 0, 3, 0, and 4, 0. The, all of them are on the B line, on the A line sorry and 0 0.41 is not far from the a line but far from the b line so let me use um, a different color here let me use green to uh, to put these points on the plane so I have a 0 1 is this point and I have 0 2 
is this point then I have 0 3 they are somewhat equally distanced hopefully I did a good job in drawing these 0 3 and I have 1 2 1 here 2 should be here so now I finish these four points and for these four points 2 0 3 0 and 4 0 so I have 1 2 2 0 3 should be here, 3, 0, 4 will be here, 4, 0, and 4, 1 should be at the same height of this point. Alright, so I have placed these four points on the 2D dimension here, and this will make humans proud because your eyes will tell you that, let me use black here, or let me use red here your eyes will tell you solution is obvious you know if I draw a line to separate the two groups and these would be it you know this would be one group and that would be one group two clusters you know um, and I as a human I didn't even have to I didn't even have to uh, calculate my eyes tell me that is a solution you know it's so boring no it's not so uh, not really if we if you think about how computers should figure this out it's not it becomes more interesting this will shame the computers computers don't have our the ability of our eyes and the the uh, the, the kind of brain that we do have and the way that eyes send the signal to our brain and process it and we internally we will know the solution Computers don't have it, but so how does computers um, do it? So that is a question. Now let me um, let me clear this out. Clear this these boundaries, and okay. So how does it? Remember the first step is to choose k, and now it's it's quite obvious that there are two groups here, two clusters, and even if uh, even though we Computer sense doesn't know it. Let's say that we we know the solution based on your know, expertise. We know the solution should be two clusters. So we will tell computer that k equal to two. So what is step two? Computers will randomly pick two points. Uh, will randomly pick two points uh, to designate as the the starting point of the two clusters. So I'm randomly picking. 0, 3, and 0, 1, and let me use two colors to designate them. Um, so, what's 0, 3? Uh, let's, let me use black to indicate, and, and, excuse, my pen always does that. Um, I'm using black to illustrate, to, to represent this point, and I'm going to use uh, blue to represent this point that I picked randomly. So blue. All right. Hopefully that's clear. Dark blue. All right. So, computer picked these two points, and the idea is that hopefully these two points provide a good initial. Uh, starting point for two clusters but that's not really good you know ideally computer would have uh, picked one point from this cluster and one point from this cluster however the two points end up badly in one cluster and they are not really too far uh, too far away from each other so so that might be that might be a bad choice that might be a bad initial points however the true beauty of computer science this algorithm k cluster k k means cluster algorithm the true beauty is that by following that that, that by following that iterations the computer will quickly derive the solution even with bad picks and here is to illustrate that so let me use then let me use a uh, red pen to write the solution all right so based on these two points 
let's make a chart. So here is a chart. I have picked randomly picked two points. Point one is designated as center of cluster one. It's zero three. A is zero. B is three. And the second cent, cent, the second cluster has centroid zero one. A is zero. B is one. You know, both of these points are on the B line. And I have put every of those eight points on eight rows. And the point is here is to figure out what are the values of these 16 cells. These 16 cells should be the, the Euclidean distance between each point to the center of each of the two clusters. So let's do it. Now, uh, in this process, I will go back and forth, like go back to the graph and go go come here to write the answer and go back and write the answer because with a graph, it's easier to figure out than simply using uh, calculations. So the first point is the cluster one itself. So here, you know, the cells here in these, in these, uh, the purpose uh, in of this table is to calculate the distance between the point and the center of each of the cluster. So, you know, each of the cells should be um, should be the distance, um, you know, between the the two um, target. Uh, the distance between this point and that point. Let's go back. Distance between this point and that point is two, and you can confirm that. Euclidean distance is calculated like this 0 minus 0 this is the number this is the difference in value a and difference in value b 3 minus 1 is 2 and take the square and then take the sum and then take the square root it should become 2 this is zero, this is four, take the square root is two. All right, I will do it quicker uh, in, in, in for the other uh, points. Here, this point is interesting because it is a distance one with cluster one, but also distance one with another cluster. And in the graph, this point is the second point, you know, it's this is the one between two groups, so it's kind of a tie. And for this point is exactly the cluster two, so the distance is zero, but it the distance with the other the other cluster would be mirrored. And this point is also interesting because it's the same distance between. Let's look at the chart. This point is same distance with, from the two cluster centroid, and the distance is square root of two. Now let's do the other four. Uh, point two zero and zero three. The distance would be four plus nine is square root of 13. Distance between two zero and zero one would be square root of five. Distance between three zero zero three would be excuse me would be three and um, square root of two. For easier comparison, I would put them in three squared is nine, so square root of eleven. However, the distance between here is three and one is is very close actually. Let me double check. Yeah. And this point four and three, you know, it's three, four and five. And here the distance is four and Four and one take the square 
16 plus 1 is 17. Now for easier comparison, we would do square root of 25. The last one, 4 and 2, would be 2. Square root of 5 would be would be 4 plus 5 is square root of 9. And and the distance of the 4, 1, and 0, 1 would be 4. And to make the comparison is square root of 16. Okay. Now, after calculating the distances, the next step is to decide to decide which cluster does each point belong to. Now, you should look for the shorter distance. You know, if the distance is shorter between the point and one of cluster, it should belong to that cl cluster. Or in other words, cluster will collect those points that are closer to them and they will win over the other cluster uh, from which the point is farther away. All right, so let's, uh, let's use the same color of the cluster to select those points uh, that belong to them. Definitely this point, zero, is smaller. This is a tie, so I'm going to randomly pick. Computers will do the same. We'll randomly assign, uh, but this won't matter too much, and you will see why. The third point should belong to st uh, cluster 2. Here, another tie. I'll just make a random pick here. It will belong to cluster 1. Here, this point belong to cluster 2. Cluster 2 is a very close call, but um, it belongs to cluster 2. Cluster 2 again, and nope. Uh, excuse me, I think I made some mistake here. Uh, I think I forgot how to calculate um, how to calculate the combination here. So within the square root, when I combine them, I should multiply them instead of um, instead of add them together. So square of three is nine. 9 multiplied by 2 is 18 and here same thing when I multiply 4 and 5 should be 20 and in that case in that case I should have the solution of this point to belong here and all these all these bubbles I should uh, change the color to blue alright there you go great now I have figured out that these three points should belong to cluster one, and these five points should belong to cluster two, uh, based on the, the center of the two clusters and where the points lie. Um, so the next step is to what is to update the center because of because new members have joined previously. There's only one member, one member in each cluster, and new points are. Or jo have joined the clusters, they are able to update the center of the cluster. So here it is. Here is the uh, membership again to clean things up. And these points, based on their location, they should be able to update these centroids. And here are the updated centered. You know, the A value of these points. Um, uh, the center, the, the A value of the centroid should be add these three numbers together, it's only one because these are zero, and divided by three is one over three. It's closely, it's, it's close to 0.33, and you can check the other calculations. So after, after the, um, after the update, um, because the, the membership, the clusters have changed. There is need to do uh, 
iteration two to recalculate the distance and to update any membership, if any. So to see where these two updated centro centroids are, I'm going to um, write them here. There's a need to recalculate the distance and regroup them and recluster to see if there's any further change to the um, to the cluster membership. So here, in order to see, is 0.3 is close to here. Let me change it to black for this. Um, 0.33 is here, but 2.33 is close to here. That's the center of the first centroid after update and the centroid of the second let me go back to check um, the center is 2.6 and 0.4 2.6 is close to 1 2 2.6 close to 3 but then her height on the B is a little bit here okay so here are the um, here are the two centroids and by visually I will skip the calculation here because it's 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 quite hard to manually do it but visually it should be easier to find and let me use um, a green color to draw where the four points uh, was three points here and the four points here and I have two zero through I think I draw this two four so, no 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 that was right I have two zero I have three zero let's say three zero is here you know so, so one two three and four and four one so now, based on the updated uh, centroids, it's not easy to visually confirm that these four points on the left, on the upper left-hand side, will be effectively in in the second iteration. If you were to calculate the distance between the centroid and each of the point here. Why does it always do that? I don't know. You know, these distances would be, you know, favorable when it when it compare the distance between the each of the point to the other centroid. So these four uh, distances will be the shorter end will be selected and a new cluster will be formed here. And on the other side, you will visually confirm that the distance between the second centroid with these four points will be shorter than otherwise uh, uh, between each of these points to the other to the first centroid so visually confirm that second cluster um, is found and computer has found the solution um, you know what's left for the computer to do is that it will calculate um, it will update the centroid by using the four points because previously the two centroids are updated by, by, in this case it's updated by three points. In this case, updated by f by five points. And now because of the slight change in membership, centroids will be updated slightly, but it won't change the next er iterations. You know, iteration three's membership. one change and this will effectively end the algorithm uh, computer um, solution worked and it only used two iterations and even with bad picks if I were as a computer were to pick a better initial centroids it could have ended the solution by one iteration by a bad pick, two iterations, and probably maximally two iterations is all that needed for such a small uh, sample as an illustration. All right, I hope that this uh, this manual example sh uh, showed you the power of cluster k-means cluster algorithm. 
um, it is it does uh, has uh, a lot of flexibility and capability in finding the clusters over a large sample. Now the next uh, few slides will illustrate another problem uh, with with mostly the tables and uh, uh, visual cues, but uh, uh, even with even with a different set of uh, points, the uh, the logic will be clear. The steps will be the same as as I did manually. Um, you you know I will leave it to you to to read these and see how quickly computers figure out the the right solution by using. Um, the simple steps of the k-means clustering. You know, just to, in a few steps, uh, computers find the solution. And here in 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 these slides, um, it showed you a a very useful metric of how to figure out what might be the uh, optimal value of k clusters and this is a very much data driven approach by using the variations and some abstract measure of cubic clustering cr criteria um, from the data it will give you a hint about what might be the optimal k this is a data driven uh, uh, approach that proves to be quite useful especially for very large data set And as I said, I will skip talking in depth about hierarchical clustering in order to keep the video short. And so, uh, please, if you're interested, you know, read them uh, by yourself um, uh, in the slides and as well as the book. The book has good materials in going through in the example of uh, different ways of doing hierarchical clustering. And, and if you have questions, make sure to let me know. All right. So, uh, so the next task is to uh, is for me to, to talk about hands-on a little bit.